All right, illustrative math, unit two, lesson 15 is called the remainder theorem. All right, so our goals for today are, I understand that for a polynomial P of X and a number A, the remainder on division of P of X by X minus A is equal to P of A. <clears throat> so what that's saying is that if I take a polynomial here, x squared plus 4x minus 5. If I divide that by x minus, let's just say, 3, okay, so I could do long division or I could do the box method or whatever. The remainder on that, all right, the last number that's left is going to be equal to if I plug in 3 to that function. So if I made plugged in 3 squared, plus four times three minus five, I would get 16, I think, okay? So basically if I did long division here, and I'll write it down here, x squared plus four x minus five, if I did long division here, the last number you get is gonna be 16. I guess I could do it quickly. And these cancel, and this becomes a plus 7x. Bring down the negative 5, I get plus 7. X times, 7 times x is 7x. This will be negative 21. Subtract. These cancel. So this is negative 5 plus 21, which gives me 16 as my remainder. Okay? <clears throat> so the next part is, I understand understand that for a polynomial p of x, x minus a is a factor if p of a equals zero, and conversely, that um, p of a equals zero if x minus a is a factor. So here's an example here. If I have x squared plus 4x minus 5, if I divide this by x plus 4, no, wait, hang on, scratch that, x plus 5, Okay, you're going to get a remainder of zero. <clears throat> I'm not going to do all the math and, and do it. But if I plug in negative five here for, for, for x, I should get zero as well. Okay, so if I plugged in negative five squared plus four times negative five minus five, I get 25 minus 25, I get zero. So the remainder would be zero if I did the long division. And if I plug in the opposite of the, the factor or set the factor equal to zero, I should say, that gives me the negative five, we will get um, zero if we plug it in. <clears throat> and we'll get more into detail with that as we go. All right, so I need you to pause the screen, write this down. This is pretty much the same as our goal. Um, this is called the remainder theorem. You should have this written down somewhere in your workbook. So write that down, pause the screen, okay? <clears throat> All right, so warm up. What do you notice? What do you wonder? So I noticed that we have long division three different times, okay? Um, I noticed that this is the quote, or this is the number you're dividing by, and this is the quotient, this is the divisor, and this is the remainder. So this would be my Quotient. I'll put a Q. This is my divisor. And this is my remainder. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And we'll call this, um, I don't know, we'll call it P. This is the, the number that you're dividing. Okay. Same thing here. The number you're dividing is equal to your divisor times your quotient. Now they switch the order. It doesn't matter here. This is your divisor. This is your quotient. This is the number getting divided. <clears throat> and then this is your remainder. Okay, that's what's left here is the two. <clears throat> Same thing here. The number being divided. This is your divisor. This is your quotient. And this is your remainder, remainder zero, okay? So we're doing long division. Um, 
what else? Notice and wonder. Let me think if I can think of anything else. Um, <clears throat> let's say here, not all numbers divide evenly into 330. 10 does, 5 does, 4 does not. Um, 10 is a factor of 330. 5 is a factor of 330 um, because we have a remainder of 0. <clears throat> All right, so next one. Consider the polynomial function f of x equals x to the fourth minus ux cubed plus 24x squared minus 32x plus 16, where u is an unknown real number. If x minus 2 is a factor, what is the value of u? Explain how you know. So here's the thing. From the remainder theorem, if x minus 2 is a factor, then f of positive 2 will equal 0. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to use that info here to solve this question. So I'm going to plug in 2 for x. So I'm plugging in 2 for x. And I'm setting it equal to 16 because f of 2, that means I plug 2 in for x, it equals 0. So now I can find u, which Kind of a lot here. I'm going to just highlight it. That's what I'm looking for, that variable. So I got to do a little little algebra, a little um, arithmetic here. So 2 to the 4th is 16. This is going to be minus 8u plus, let's see here, what's that, 96, I think. Minus 64 plus 16 equals 0. So now I'm going to just do a little algebra here. I'm going to add all the constants. So 16 plus 96 minus 64 plus 16. So if I add all these like terms here, I get 0 equals 64 minus 8u. And I got to move one of these terms over to the other side. So I'll move the 8u over or the negative 8u over to make it a positive 8u. And I divide by 8, divide by 8, u equals 8. Okay? <clears throat> so if you ever get one of those, just use the remainder theorem, plug the value in for x, and then set the whole thing equal to 0. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so which of these polynomials could have x minus 2 as a factor? So... You could do this a couple different ways. Um, you know, I'll do I'll do the first three three different ways, and then I'll do them, the rest probably the easiest way. You could do a box, and what you could do here is you could say, okay, x minus two, and we got six x squared. We have negative five, so this would be times six x, and we can kind of just see if we can get it to work minus 12x. So then this here would have to be, oh, shoot, I have, I don't need four spots. I only need four spaces in the box. So this would have to add up to this negative 7. So this would be a 5x. So that would be x times 5. And then when I look here, Negative 2 times 5 is not equal to that. So this one would be a no. Okay, so I used the box method to see if it would if it would work. All right, for B, I'm going to do long division. So <clears throat> if I divide this in, 3x squared plus 15x minus 42, I get um, this times... 3x, x times 3x gives me 3x squared. Now I distribute. So I get 3x squared minus 6x, and then I subtract. <clears throat> Those cancel. This becomes plus, so I get 21x minus 42, and then I do it again. So x times 21, then I multiply, and then I subtract. So these cancel. This gives me, so that's plus 42, so this gives me a remainder of 0. So that's what I'm looking for is my remainder of 0. 
this one would be a yes. And really, what is it? It's x minus 2 times 3x plus 21, okay? We don't need to put the plus the remainder because if I put plus 0, I don't really need to put plus 0. Okay, so there's two ways. You can do the box, see if you can get it all factored. You can do long division, check for a remainder of 0. The other thing I could do is I could plug in 2, okay? So from the remainder theorem, if x minus 2 is a factor, <clears throat> c of 2 will equal 0. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right here for c, so this was a, this was b. For c, I'm just going to plug in 2 <clears throat> and see if I get 0. So I'm going to get 2 times 2 cubed plus 13 times 2 squared plus 16 times 2, plus 5. <clears throat> so just type that into your calculator and see if you get 0. So I do not. Let's see what I get here. 2 times 2 cubed plus 13 times 2 squared plus 16 times 2 plus 5. That gave me 105. So c of 2 equals 105, which is not equal to 0. So this would be a no. <clears throat> and I'm going to probably just plug in 2 here for all of these um, real quick and, and see what happens here. So if I plug in 2 here, I'm going to get 0. All right, type it, plug it into your calculator, see if it works. Um, for the next one, I also get 0 when I plug it in. And then the last one, I do not. Um, let's do it. All right, so this is for F. <clears throat> so I go ahead, let's see what we get. I end up getting negative 324, so f of 2. So again, why did I plug in 2? Because x minus 2 is a factor. I need to do the opposite of that. <clears throat> All right, so this part, we already did this. I just wrote this here, <clears throat> copied it so that we have all the polynomials. So number 2, select one of the polynomials that you said doesn't have x minus 2 as a factor. Explain how you know. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna pick the third one, c of x. So I don't know why I went back. I have it right here. So oh, I went back to see which one was not. So your choices are a, c, or f. Okay. So I'm gonna use c. Let's say c of x. All right. So explain how you know it's not. So we use the remainder theorem. and found c of 2 is not equal to 0. <clears throat> so that's how we did it. Um, so now we're going to do division. So because um, we did not do long division on that one. So I'm going to do x minus 2 into 2x cubed plus 13x squared plus 16x plus 5. So x times 2x squared would give me 2x cubed. Multiply. And then you subtract. So these are gone. This becomes a plus, so this is... 17x squared, and then I bring down the next term. <clears throat> and I repeat, x times 17x would give me 17x squared subtract these cancel. This becomes a plus 34, so that would give me a 40x 
bring down the five. So I'm going to get times 40. X times 40 would give me 40X. Subtract those, cancel. This becomes a plus, so 85 is my remainder. <clears throat> okay? So there's my remainder. Now, if I were to plug in 2 here to this function, I think that's what I got. I got 85. Wait, oh, no, shoot. I got 105. Uh-oh. They should match up. Let me double check my math here. Hold on. 2 times 2 cubed plus 13 times 2 squared, 16 times 2, I'm getting 105, hold on, hold on, let me double check my math, x times 2 squared, Oh, here's my problem. This should be a 50. So here, I'll write it in blue. That should have been a 50. So there we go. So let me erase this line here. Fifty x plus 5. So that's going to change this up here to a 50. Now I multiply, I get 50x minus 100, and then I subtract. Those are gone. This becomes plus, so I get 105, which was the same thing I got on the other one when I just, um, right here for this middle one, when I just plugged it in, I got 105. So now they match. There's a mistake on that one. <clears throat> All right, um, list the remainders for each of the polynomials when divided by x minus 2. How do these values compare to the values? So we know they're going to be the same, okay? We just kind of showed it. So we did this one. So for c of x, um, it's 105. Your remainder is 105. And then c of 2 is also 105. Um Let's see here. Um, oh, I'm, I got to do A. So A, my remainder on A, which I guess I could just plug it in here for that. So let's just plug in 2. So 6. So I'm going to just do the math here. This I'm going to say 6 times 2 squared minus 7 times 2 minus 5. I get 5. So your remainder would be 5, which is the same as plugging it in. Okay? So that, I'm not C, sorry, that would be A, A of 2. And there's that one. I'm kind of going out of order. And then the last one I think was F. So let's do F. Um, and I kind of already did all the work. If I go back, F, I got f of 2 is negative 324, so my remainder is also going to be negative 324. I'm not going to do the long division. It didn't ask me to. Um, it just asked what, what it would be. And f of 2 is negative 324. Okay, so you have to change the sign. If it's x minus 2, I have to plug in 2. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so this is a lesson synthesis, um, <clears throat> kind of working backwards. So here's the answer. What is the question? So we're going to try to come up with a question. Then there's many multiple right answers that there could be. Um, <clears throat> so it could be something very, very basic. Um, you know, it could be something like this. Um, write a third degree polynomial that has x intercepts or horizontal intercepts at x equals one half, negative two, and eight. <clears throat>
because again, if you set each one of these equal to zero, if I took two x minus one equal to zero, I'd get one half. X plus two equals zero, that'd be negative two. I'd get eight. <clears throat> um, what else could it be? Um, could be maybe um, um, if x plus 2 is a factor of a polynomial. And then I guess to find the polynomial, I would have to multiply all this out. Okay, so if I were to multiply that out, you know, I would do 2x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 8. I'd probably make a box for these two first. And that would give me x squared minus 4. And then I'd make a box here. And I think I'm going to get 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 4. So um, <clears throat> if x minus 2 is a factor of a polynomial, So I'd be like um, trying to find it in, with linear factors. So I would say write the polynomial as a product of linear factors. Okay. So there's a bunch of other things that, that could be right here. Um, these are one. These are one and two possibilities. Okay. All right. So I understand the remainder theorem and why it's true. So. <clears throat> You know, the key here is if x minus 9 is a factor of polynomial p of x, then p of 9 equals 0, okay? And if it was x plus 9, it'd be p of negative 9, okay? <laughs> All right, last thing, let P be a polynomial function right here, P of X. Use the fact that P of negative 4 equals negative 33. P of negative 3 equals 0. P of negative 2 equals 7. And P of negative 1 equals 0 to rewrite the expression as a product of linear factors. Okay, so <clears throat> the key that you need here are these two, the ones equal to 0. So <clears throat> if um, negative 3 gives me 0, that means x plus 3 is a factor. And if negative 1 gives me 0, that means x plus 1 is a factor. So <clears throat> you could do this, again, a couple different ways. Um, I would probably do this. I would multiply these two together. And, you know, if I make a box here, x3, x1, I'm going to get x squared 3x, x, and 3, x squared plus 4x plus 3. So <clears throat> it's going to be these two times one more, because I need to get up to cubed, equals 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 9. So <clears throat> basically these two multiplied together here give me this. We could say this times what equals 2x cubed <clears throat> plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 9. So I'm going to make a box here. I'm going to put my x squared here. I'm going to put my 4x and I'm going to put my 3. <clears throat> and I'm going to kind of just work backwards here. So I know this is going to be a 2x cubed, and I know this is going to be a negative 9. So here we go. Um, x squared times 2x would give me 2x cubed. 
three times negative three would give me negative nine. I don't really even need to do the rest of it. Um, I could, but um, it's going to work if I just multiply these and these. Those add up to five. And then this is 6x, and this is negative 12x, and those add up to negative 6. So, yeah, you see how it works. So here's my other factor. It's um, <clears throat> 2x minus 3. So I'm going to write it as x plus 3, x plus 1, and 2x minus 3. That would be my exact same polynomial. All right. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.